the number of people dying from drug overdoses today is for an hour, nationwide, an hour. And that, to me, is the definition of a crisis. Killing people at a higher rate than HIV, car crashes, or gun violence, the opioid epidemic has ravaged the country. One region hit especially hard by the epidemic is New England. Once recognized by lobster fishermen eating clam chowder, now it's known as a hotbed for opioid deaths. Between 2002 and 2014, drug overdose fatalities more than doubled in every New England county. To learn more about the problem, I spoke with Senator Angus King of Maine. We've read in Maine there's basically one person dying a day from... One, one a day overdose deaths, 40% more this year than last year. A major challenge of the opioid epidemic is the increasing rate doctors are prescribing these drugs. When patients get a month's supply of highly addictive pills to treat pain that will be gone in a week, it opens the door to bigger and more dangerous problems. Four out of five new heroin users start with prescription drugs. So it starts, for me, with overprescribing of opioids. I mean, I met a young man who was addicted, who was going through rehab and treatment, who started with a, with a high school sports injury. Gave him the drugs. Nobody said, only take as many as you need. He took whatever it was, 30, sometimes it's 60. By that time, he was hooked. And then you go to heroin because heroin gives the same kind of result, but it's cheaper. So doctors bear some responsibility. Yes, they do. And I've met with them and said that. What do they say to you? This is the law of unintended consequences. One of the ways doctors and hospitals are now measured is, did you leave the office pain free? The problem is that becomes an incentive to prescribe these very powerful pain medications. And I've talked to a lot of physicians. I said, now, what do you have for training in medical school about dealing with these drugs? Zero. So you mean to tell me they don't tell you any they of don't, the They don't, apparently, I'm told. I, I, killers I, in medical school? Right. Well, they talk about pain kills, but they don't talk about the danger of addiction or how to control it or how to watch for it or any of those. At least that's what I've been told. Now, that may have changed more in the last few years. But I had a round table with a group of people in rural Maine, including a physician. I asked her that question. She said, nothing. And these things are dangerous. They're dangerous drugs. And if you have an operation, a knee operation or anything, they'll typically give you 30 of these pills. You need two or three. And then those pills either end up on the street, in a medicine chest, kids can get them. The mounting pressure on doctors to minimize pain as fast as possible and physicians who aren't trained on the effects of opioids are only part of the problem. Pharmaceutical companies also market their drugs heavily to consumers and doctors, driving the issue from both ends. I do think that the, the pharmaceutical companies have oversold the drugs and undersold the, the dangers. And uh, I do and think we're one that's of the part few of countries it. where pharmaceutical companies can market directly to consumers, too. Absolutely. You know how you can tell how serious this problem is? You're now seeing ads on TV for constipation for people who take opioids. So we're seeing drugs being sold to deal with the side effects of drugs being sold. If you need an opioid to manage your chronic pain, you may be so constipated. It feels like everyone can go, except you. The number of prescriptions and the number of pills are just ridiculous. Americans make up 5% of the world's population, yet consume 80% of the world's opioids. And because the crisis is spreading on such a massive scale, our medical and political leaders are still debating the best way to stop it. Many of your colleagues in the Senate have argued that we should still criminalize this issue. What's your reaction to that? Well, certainly I think dealing should be criminal. There's no question. I what think, about using? Well, I think criminalizing using, what's the point? I mean, you, you, okay, you convict somebody of using, sending them to jail. The jails have become de facto detox centers without any resources. I've met with sheriffs, police what chiefs. What the They say you can't arrest your way out of this problem. This is a disease and treatment is the answer. There's still a lot of people out there who say it's a choice. It's just a lifestyle choice to hell with these people. It isn't. At least everything I've been told, it's a brain disease that hijacks the, the judgment part of your brain. All you want is the next, uh, the next hit. I mean, I sat in a round table and sitting next to me was a deputy sheriff, I mean, in Maine, who lost his daughter to a drug overdose. I mean, these aren't 
different kind of people far away in some big city or something. These are friends and neighbors. These are regular citizens. That's why the stigma part is important because policymakers, congressmen, senators need to know these are their people. This isn't abstract numbers. These are the real people who are suffering. They're in Milo, Maine, and Dover, Foxcroft, and Bridgeton. I mean, these are all towns you probably haven't heard of. But they're, you know, they're small town America that are being ravaged by this. Uh, the biggest issue we've got now is treatment. We don't have treatment capacity in Maine or in New Hampshire or anywhere else. And treatment can work. It maybe it'll take two or three times through, but there are people around out in the society that have beaten this and are sober and, and doing fine. What if we if repeal Obamacare? Money, uh, what will that mean for drug treatment? That'll be a disaster. Uh, the figure I've recently seen is that repealing the Affordable Care Act will take $5 billion out of drug treatment. Why not treat this thing and try to help people when they're ready to get help? And that's, that's humane, and it also makes sense from the point of view of the rest of the society. What would your advice be to constituents, citizens who have family members, maybe they themselves, who are struggling with addiction? They need to speak up. They need to be heard. And they need for policymakers to understand that they are regular people. Senator, thank you so much. Really thank appreciate you. It. Yeah. What a pleasure.